Hello residents of Meeple Town. So today we are taking a look at Colors of Paris where you're going to be taking on the role of an artist in Paris. You're going to be trying to paint pictures and really essentially just be able to be the one with most points at the end of the game. So let's get to the table and check out Colors of Paris. So here we see the setup for Colors of Paris. Here is the main worker placement board in the center. We have our different characters over here. The red player is going to be playing Van Gogh and the blue player is going to be playing Monet. And this is basic worker placement with some twist where you're gonna be trying to get your color pigments and paint these cards up at the top. Now I will say, I am playing, there's two different variants included in the box. One is the, uh, where you're playing with the different character special abilities. I am playing with that. I'm not playing with the specialty cards. Uh, I, I really like the specialty cards, but I feel like it might be a bit too much to add for just kind of showing you how the game plays out. So on a player's turn, what they are going to be doing is placing workers out onto the board. They're gonna be gaining pigments and then essentially uh, really trying to be able to paint these paintings at the top. And the first player to complete the second painting will trigger the end of the game. So you're gonna get points from these completed paintings. You're gonna get points from moving up on your or different uh, stats for your uh, for your character on your player boards and you're also going to be gaining points for the the black cubes if you gain those uh, as well each of those is going to be worth uh, points at the end of the game let's just dig in so the first thing you're going to do uh, you're going to notice that this is a circular worker placement board i the red player is going to be the first player they're going to place a worker out on the board uh, i'll just kind of briefly explain these spots there's several that just give you the basic pigments the primary color pigments and then you can mix colors to be able to get other colors needed to paint and then you also can take spots to be able to take these cards up here or paint uh, cubes onto the board. So uh, right off the bat, what we're trying to do really is just gain points, uh, gain different colors. Now Van Gogh's special ability is he can hold on to 16 different paint pigments at the end of the round. Most players can only do 12. And then Monet, each time uh, you perform the acquire yellow pigment action, you immediately paint one to two yellow spaces um, onto your board. So Monet's really going to try to get one of these that has yellow pigments built in. All right, so Van Gogh looks out here and thinks, okay, there's uh, some red and blue right here that I'd like to be able to get potentially, or the purple, but that's how you make purple is, is with red and blue. So either of those is going to be a good spot since red is not available for this round, just blue, they'll place out there in blue. Uh, Van Gogh or Claude Monet is thinking, all right, I would like to get this one, but what I'm going to need is to be able to paint green, which means I'm going to need blue and yellow. Uh, also in that one, we've got red. Now, none of those are available, so I will go ahead and place, and what I did not do right off the bat is we each get one of these uh, primary colors to start off with, and uh, I will go ahead and put those out now. So. Uh, let's see, so the blue player, or excuse me, red player thinks, all right, I'd really like to be able to move up my different stats here to be able to take more colors uh, or to mix better. And so I think what red's gonna do is just place right there. Blue is thinking, all right, I'd really like to be able to mix as well. Ooh, this is a, a tougher decision, so I think we're just gonna, I think what, what Blue's gonna do is just place here to, to gain the yellow and uh, be ready for the next round. We each have one more worker. Now, I did not mention that there's also three spots here in the middle. One is to gain white pigments based on what your uh, number is here, and I'll explain all that when we're actually taking the actions. And this is take the first player and a white pigment. This one is to um, to move the board zero to up to two spots, and then this one is to take an action of another player. So I think what Red is going to do is go ahead and get some white pigments to be able to help out in the future is, is kind of a filler and blue thinks well I'd like to go ahead and just uh, take an action that the red player is going to be taking so after we've done that we're going to place all of those workers and again you start off with three workers but you can gain more workers as the game goes on by moving up on these different tracks 
and you're going to one by one, starting with the first player, take the action of one of your workers. So red says, all right, I'd really like to be able to, let's say, gain blue. And so uh, they'll lay their worker down here and they'll take blue pigments based on whatever that top row is. So in this case, they can take three, but as they improve on that track, they'll be able to take more and more of those pigments. Blue would like to go ahead and just take this action right here because what this one does is it will allow the player to take the action of um, a standing up worker. And since uh, they don't wanna wait too long to do that, they're gonna go ahead and do that now. So they're gonna take the action of, now they can do that of any worker that's standing up. And so they will take the action of the red player, which is, um, going to cost two pigments uh, of any color to be able to move up on this mixing track, which means that they'll, when they mix, they'll mix and get three instead of two. So they lay that one down. I'm sorry, they're not supposed to lay that worker down. They're supposed to take the worker of that one, so they'll pay two pigments of any color. They're going to get yellow, so they don't mind getting rid of that. They need blue, so they're going to hold on to that. So they'll pay a red and a yellow and move up on this track. So now when they mix, they'll gain three. Now the red player is gonna go ahead and take their next action, which is going to be to do the exact same thing that the blue player had just done. And that is to pay two. And anytime you're moving up on the track, it's gonna cost you two of any color pigment and to move up on this track and they'll pay blue since that's what they have a lot of right now. And let's see, so blue player is going to just go ahead and take their yellow. They'll take three yellow pigments and it'll go here onto their board. And then the red is going to take their white pigments and white pigments are just kind of filler for uh, their paintings. Um, they're able to, to paint with uh, white pigments on there, but when they do that, it's actually going to um, subtract points from that total. So I'm just gonna put these Let's see, I'll just put these right here. Remember, you can only hold on to 14. Right now, it's not gonna be a problem. And blue player is gonna lay this one down, pay two pigments, they'll play, excuse me, pay two yellow, and that will move them up here. So now when they take this action, well, I should have done that in reverse order, done this first, but now when they take the, um, the action where they gain pigments, they're actually gonna gain four instead of gaining three from now on. Again, I should reverse that so that when I took my second action, I'd be able to gain four that round instead of three, but this is just giving you an idea of how it plays. Okay, so now once all the workers have been played out, what the what is going to happen is you are going to rotate the board. So now this is really the, the, the kind of the crux of the game is planning out your actions so that when the board does rotate, you'll be able to potentially take that action again. Now, after you've done that, uh, if any of these cards have been taken, you're, you're gonna uh, replace those. And we don't have any of those that we're working on yet, but we'll probably start taking those soon. And now that that's rotated, the players are going to leave one of their workers out on the board. And that's why planning is so important in this game, because when you, uh, are in a spot, you want to think ahead, uh, I want to gain the benefit this time, but can I put also leave my worker there this round to gain that action for the next round? And so red is going to, they'd like to gain a painting, or they actually would like to paint, but they're not going to be able to do that. So I think what red is going to do is leave, and it has to be one of these spots on the outside, they're going to leave this here to gain that yellow, and then they're going to take their other workers back and then blue says well, I'd like to gain a painting but I'd also like to be able to get the red now there's only one spot and this is a, a two-player game some of these spots are, are open for a uh, three and four uh, player game and then uh, you know for more than two players and then they'll take their other workers now I would like to leave a worker here to be able to gain that, uh, to gain a painting card, but there's two spots here, so I don't really need to do that. And so they gain their workers back, and you're gonna keep doing that over and over again, and again, the, until that, that end game triggers where two paintings are completed, or you have two, uh, I'm sorry, all of the, the black cubes are, are gone. And you can get those black cubes by turning in a orange, purple, and green, but that's pretty difficult because you have to mix a lot of colors to do that. And that's just kind of a gist of how the game plays out. I just wanted to show you a round of that. 
Let's get back and hear my final thoughts on the game. All right, that is Colors of Paris. Now, one thing that I didn't, uh, that I neglected to mention is how you paint the paintings and, and how you mix colors. So I mentioned that on your player board that you're moving up in those different slots, slots to be able to give you better action. So in the mixing column, when it says, let's say you have your marker on the number four, that means if I want to make the color green, I'm going to discard a one blue and one yellow to get four greens. That's how that slot works. And then when you want to paint, that's the last track on there. You, When you take the paint action, you are going to put the amount of cubes that you have available that can go onto your painting equal to the number of the track that you're on. So for example, if I'm on the number three on the paintbrush track, that means when I take the painting action, I'll be able to put three cubes onto my board. Now I didn't really get to show that mainly because I've only, I only played through the first round. You're not really gonna get to some of that. The mixing you'll, you'll do probably in the second round, but then the painting you might not even do until the third, maybe even fourth round potentially. So anyway, I hope that kind of gives you an idea. Now let's talk about the art and components. And the art and components I think are pretty fantastic. I love the, the recess boards. I think that the, uh, the, the plastic cubes are, uh, usually I like wooden cubes better. I think the plastic ones work just aesthetically better in this one. Uh, I think the art in the cards is, is great. And uh, overall, I think, it's, I think it's really well done. I also really enjoy the, the, the custom meeples they have, the little painter meeples for all the different players. So uh, overall, I like it. Now, one thing I will say is I wish that they would have had some female artist in this game. Uh, to change it up a little bit, it's it's all it's all guys as the artist, and I feel like probably thematically it would have been fine just to put some some non non males in the game. But anyway, it, it is what it is. But I think overall art and components and and all of that works really well. Now the gameplay itself, I think the gameplay is at at first glance it's really basic worker placement right so you're just placing your workers out on the board gaining resources using those resources to paint paintings and so that in and of, in and of itself is is really basic but what makes this game shine and what games makes this game a lot different than other worker placements is the board rotating and so when the the board rotates you have to think and, and the fact that you get to leave an extra worker out on or you have to leave an extra worker out on the board really makes you think not just what am i going to do this turn but what can i do this turn that will benefit me but also uh, benefit me for the next round and it's possible because you only you're you have to leave a worker from the outer ring out And so if you're placing two workers on the inner part It's possible that if you don't plan well that you don't even get to take the action of the worker that you've placed from that previous round So I think that part is is, is really neat it, that that's what makes the game shine and the fact that w when you play with the uh, the other elements so when you play with the the artist and their special abilities that they have on their cards and using the specialist cards, I think that's really the way that you're going to want to go. Now, if you're if you're not if you're really new to game, I think just the base game actually works really well as a as an introductory worker placement game, uh, and really a, as a gateway game in general, specifically for somebody who really is drawn to this theme, somebody who really enjoys um, the 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 art theme that surrounds this game. And then when you add in those extra pieces, it becomes this next step game. And I think that's really cool how they do that. And so I think it's a great game to introduce people to. Now it's not it's not necessarily gonna blow you away as being like the most amazing worker placement game of all time. However, what it will do is it probably, like I said, draw those people in who are artists and, and people who are really drawn to this theme. And, and that element of the way the board plays out is Pretty cool, and so that that could be something that really draws you in as well. So for me, um, it, I think it's a fun game. I'm going to give this one a seven out of ten, which is a game that I will uh, I'll enjoy playing. If you ask me to play this game, I will play it, and and for sure not have an issue. But it's just not a game that I'm going to want to play all the time because the variability is not quite. Uh, it, it's not quite there. So anyway, I, a seven, that's a great score. I think it's a, it's a really good game, and uh, that's it. That's it for Colors of Paris. Seven out of ten for me. Thanks for coming down to Meepletown. Thanks for joining us, and be sure to follow us on Twitter at Meepletown Games, and connect with us on the Meepletown Guild, guild number 3407, at boardgamegeek.com, and also subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel. 
And until next time, thanks for coming down to Meepletown.